Hello, this is Curtis Salgado. You're watching 101.9 Kink Radio at the Skype Live Studio. Keep it going, guys. He's yours. He's yours. We can take ownership, right? I say we'll take ownership of you. Is that all right? Can I, can I get a little bit in the wedges here? That'll help Curtis out a little bit. When are you going to teach me how to sing like that, man? I'm not. Oh, come on. <laughs> I'm free this, this weekend. Friday, I'll get you up to the mic, too. We're, we're working hard enough. Oh, okay. We're working hard enough. As it singing is. As it is. All right. Well, yeah, I was going to tell you, I was open Friday or Saturday, but I hear you're not. So, I didn't get that, what you just said. Say that again. I says, uh, I was looking for maybe Friday or Saturday, but right. I fear that you're oh, not Oh, this free. weekend? Yes. yes that's I, a, ah, that was a segue into... He's a, learning. Yeah, yeah. That My was brother's good. learning. Yeah, tell good, us yeah. all about it. Friday well, and Saturday night, we are doing a CD release party, right? Yes, we are at Jimmy Max. We'd like to see you there. I hope. Yeah. yeah Got well, a horn section. Got this amazing band right here. Excellent. Which is, uh, well, many of us know the amazing band. Right. Introduce them to us. All right. On guitar is Alan Hager right here yes. on the kind of Portland's best kept secret. True. One of the baddest guitar players this side of the Mississippi. And then playing percussions and singing on there is the amazing Brian Foxworth. You all know him. Brian is the utility man of Portland, Oregon. But he always brings the music up. You know, he brings the musicality up so much in the band. My partner in crime for 21 years, a prodigy himself from Seattle, Washington. Give it up right here. This is Tracy Arrington right here. Yes. And Professor over there, Professor... Uh, a great keyboard player, singer, songwriter. Give it up, please, for Brian Harris on the keys. Yes. <laughs> My name is Curtis Salgado. I, I live over on Southeast 13th Street. Just a product of home. Just a all product right. of home. All right, all right. So we got the new album we're talking about it kicking off. You've been doing the sit-ups and the push-ups, brother? Because I see you are no, going to be busy no, until like... a I... black shirt. That's what's doing it. <laughs> And mirrors. That's what I tell people. I work with mirrors. So you're busy, man. You, you've got a full concert tour, and you're doing all the fests, and you're playing them straight through August. That's a, that's a young man's job, but uh, you're up Thanks, for it. Thanks, Steve. Thank no. you. <laughs> yes. No. Yeah, I, I just, I've heard that some people like to do it in, in spurts, but you, my man, you are doing it just all the way through, because this new album, I, I've seen it already on the top of the charts. And, no, seriously, I've seen a whole bunch of charts coming in for the play of April through right. what we, when we report. So far, I've seen like four or five that got you at number one, so I can guarantee you next week on The Roots, he's going to be number one. Oh, right. New album. Yeah. And we talked before. You've always had a special place in our hearts, but this one, and this isn't coming from anywhere but the heart, this is the album. This is the one that I really can find no wrong with. What you did with Guitar Watson's track, it brought chill. It's bringing chills to me right now because you, you have now crossed over to me. You always use the names like O.V. Wright, Johnny Adams, Johnny Taylor, all those boys. You, for me, have crossed over into that with this album. And I have no idea why it just seems so much different. Is it just you and Marlon after all these years? And I know Tony was a part of it too, but I hear you got a lot more... Curtis on this album. Yeah, and uh, um, I appreciate you saying that. But, you know, Marlon is kind of like the puzzle master. So in the studio, it's in order to get a live organic sound in this day of technology and all sorts of whiz-bang things and audio tuner and stuff, uh, I like just straight ahead. So what you do is you record the rhythm section first. And the fellas here are on four of the tunes. And I took uh, 17 songs and picked 12 of them. And I did have 12 originals, and then I played the producers, Marlon and Tony Bronigal, this song by, uh, that he's talking about by uh, Johnny Guitar Watson called Hook Me Up. And I, they went, ooh. This is, so I took an original off. I was like, oh, yeah, man, this is Johnny Guitar, and he's one of my biggest heroes and a huge influence on me. And I knew what songs the band would sound best on, and these guys are on Hook Me Up, which, unfortunately, we won't be playing for you today. And uh, Yeah, I know. Here we are talking about it. But uh, got to get the album, yeah, right? Yeah, you gotta get, yeah, you're going to have to. So, 
So thank you again. If oh, it's brother, bump, thanks, and, thanks for that. And the backing and, uh, vocals, you got the girls sounding like, oh my God, what was that all about? You said Margaret. Brian is one of them, and Margaret Lynn, uh, she arranged it, and saying uh, another girl named Erica Warren, who's an amazing gospel singer and singer and right, and then uh, Loranda Steele on it. So him with these three girls and stuff, a nice blend. And we thought about it. Everything we done, we thought about it. So I did the background, the horns. Uh, all the little sweetening and stuff here and did a, the uh, the basic tracks in L.A. and then worked from there. So everything is in the studio live. And then I just put the sweetening horns on. To, I sang the horn parts to David Mills. And David sat there and goes, keep going, keep going. And then he arranged it. In other words, you know, alto, tenor, baritone, trumpet. And then we decided how many horns. We have two, tr you know. So in other words, we just built it from that. And uh, I pretty much... Did it all, and Dave's yeah. going to be with part the of help this. of Marlon and Tony, right. especially Marlon. Man, Marlon is—he's just kind of like the puzzle master. Yeah. You know? That's cool, and it just seems like family because uh, taking a look it at is. everybody that you have on this, it is. you've worked with so many of it these folks. Is. Yeah. yeah. So uh, keeping it tight, you know what? And then another thing: how absolutely gorgeous is the new cover of this one? Because I'm going through my my Curtis Salgado library. I must say is growing. It's getting bigger. But I'm looking back at the first one, Stilettos. There's your mug. Heck, you're even on the mug with the the Roomful album. But here's here's Curtis. Here's Curtis. Was there ever in the camp in the entourage? Was there ever a conversation about let's get yes. something else on the cover? Yes. <laughs> And the last Alligator record, I kind of had a, a, a small conversation because Bruce Siglar wanted, you sing, this is your acts, you've got to be on if you're going to break, you know, if, if we're going to push you, we have to show what acts you play. Gotcha. And you're a singer, so hold a microphone. I was like, <laughs> I don't want to, you know, yeah. be like pose this. Pose it, pose it. <laughs> so so uh, I, we, I used to look at uh, old, um, you know, um, Blue Note records those great jazz covers mm -hmm. and on one of them there's a microphone hanging down so I said can you so we worked with each other we compromised and he said okay on this one I want and I said I don't want to be on the cover of it and believe it or not that's funny Bruce yeah. Iglar is the one who came up with that oh really he came up with the image and Bruce Iglar is the president of Alligator Records he's a very hands-on person yeah. and he could be he's a They've been going for 40 years. They have everyone from Mavis Staples to Dr. John to all the great blues cats, you know, Albert Collins, on and on and on. And I'm very proud to be on the label, and they, they work really hard. It was the first album that uh, turned me on to Hound Dog Taylor was Alligator. So Right. That was the first record on Alligator. Yeah. So we're healthy. Everything's good, man. We'd love to hear that yeah, about you. So far, you look so great. So you look fantastic. So to. you promised me sometime, yeah. It's like Ellen or, you know, Ellen, it's like one of those, thank you, and I did the diet with this. <laughs> you know, so. All right, well, sometime midnight, we'll go pancakes again, all right? Okay, that's right. All right, and we'll blow things up on the 4th of July. I had the funnest time. We had a good friend from uh, Chicago by the name of Nick Moss came out, got to take him out to a two-acre farm, and we blew the out of stuff, didn't I, we? I am in. Yeah, I'm into fireworks, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> New album's called Beautiful Lowdown. He's got two shows, Jimmy Max, this Friday and Saturday night. Guys, it's my good friend, Curtis Salgado. Thank you.